God is good and all the time and that is nature wow and I am a witness of the Lord and especially now we are all witnesses of the Lord's resurrection the time of Easter is a time when we celebrate that Jesus Christ has resurrected he has defeated the powers of darkness he has defeated the power of death he has defeated the power of sin and that is simply what we call the witness of the resurrection of our Lord and therefore brothers and sisters on this third Sunday we are here and from the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear Peter's testimony, Peter's witness, how he's talking, how Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He even narrates and says, those who died long ago, including David, their tombs can be found. But the tomb of Jesus, where he was buried, is an empty tomb. And therefore, he testifies and witnesses and says, Indeed, Jesus Christ, the author of all life, could not be restrained in the tomb. And therefore, he gives testimony that Jesus Christ is indeed resurrected. The second reading from the letter of St. Peter, we are told that the blood of Jesus is not like the blood of sheep and goats that the Old Testament talks about that was slaughtered so that people would be cleansed of their sins. This reminds us even the Passover lamb that was sacrificed even at the time when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. But Jesus is the unblemished lamb that has been sacrificed so that we are ransomed from our old selves. We are ransomed from sin and now we can emerge victorious. We can emerge like people who can raise our heads high because we are no longer in the bondage, in the chains of sin and death, but we are people who are free and we can say freedom has come. Freedom at last has come but this freedom dear brothers and sisters we need to jump we need and we need to walk step by step so that we can understand how this freedom of the children of god this freedom of us who have been ransomed by the blood of christ baptized in the name of the trinity baptized in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit that now we are free. And today, in the Emmaus experience, where we see Cleopas and the other disciple, like giving up. Listen to what they say uh, to Jesus when he asks, What are you discussing? And they ask him, Are you the only visitor? in Jerusalem because only a visitor would not have heard of what had happened to here in Jerusalem how Jesus had been tried how Jesus had been crucified how Jesus had died on the cross buried and of what people are saying the third day that even people are saying he has risen from the dead and therefore their eyes and their ears were closed, they did not understand what was happening. They did not understand that this was to happen. And therefore, they say, rather than stay in Jerusalem, where they are feeling hopeless, where they are feeling like they have been betrayed by this master who they have been following, now he has gone. It is like they have nothing else to to hold on to and what do they do they go to Jerusalem they decide to go to Jerusalem 
and it is towards evening. It is like some of us, when we stay in our various groups, sometimes even in our families, sometimes even in the church, we think that other people are a bother to us. And therefore, to use the social media language, we left the group, the left group, because we think the others are not good for us. The others are making us not move in the right direction. Therefore, we leave. We want to live on our own. We don't want to associate with others. So Cleopas and his friend thought, let us go back to where we belong. Let us go back to our village in a mouse. It may be better. We are not be thinking about Jesus. We are not going to be thinking about the resurrection. Therefore, they take off and they go. Many of us take off and go. Many of us do not want to associate with others. And therefore, we want to stay on our own. Remember when Jesus has called you, even if you go your own way, just like Jesus comes and encounters these two who are in a hopeless situation, Jesus will still find you. Do not leave the group. Don't leave the group. Be with the group. As we hear from at the, towards the end, of the gospel while they were away where they had gone what happened Jesus appeared to the eleven and they saw him they even he was even telling them touch me and see that I'm alive but did they get that experience no because they had already and they had they were on their way to a mouse and therefore brothers and sisters it is important that even when we feel helpless, even when we see as if we are not getting anything from our family, our jumuia, our church, we should not leave. We should stay together. Because we say together we can be able to conquer, together we can be able to move far. Anyhow, the two left. And on the way, Jesus appears to them. But since their eyes are closed, their ears are open to what he's saying, they did not recognize him to be the risen Lord. And it is really strange that a stranger who does not seem to know what is happening and you guys know what is happening that can come and tell you and tell the other things when he says what things and they tell him and then they say oh foolish men imagine somebody who is not acquitted to you comes and calls you a fool what will happen will you just take it kindly we wonder who is this guy telling us that we are foolish and yet in that stupor of being foolish they listen what does he tell them? He tells them all about himself. He tells them about Jesus in the Old Testament and how he had to suffer, how he had to die, how he had to be buried, but on the third day do, do what? Resurrect. And this story for them was a very good story and they were finding it very, a very good story. But their hearts were closed. Their eyes were closed. Jesus walks with them. They don't recognize him. But they hear what he's saying. He opens the scripture to them. And this is what we do every celebration of the Mass in the liturgy. That we begin Mass, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And we start by confessing our, our sins. And later on, what do we do? We sit down to listen to the word of God. That the word of God is proclaimed to us. The word of God is to us. That is why we always stress that the word of God has got to be read and proclaimed in the right way so that we can... 
it can open our hearts. Jesus opens the hearts of these people, Cleopas and his friends. But yet, they do not recognize. Sometimes we read the Holy Bible. Like a very interesting story. And maybe some of us have done it very many times. Oh, it is very interesting, isn't it? You take um, the Acts of the Apostles. Oh, a very good story. You take the book of Esther. You take the book of Wisdom. You read Genesis and you say, Ah, a very good story. But does not speak to what? Speak to your life. It does not speak to your current situation. Because your eyes are still closed. Your heart is still closed. But the story is good. They listened. And listen to what they said. They did not our heart burn. So you can read the word of God and your heart burn with joy. Your heart burn with saying, ah, that story is indeed a very good story. When you hear Ruth saying, my people shall be, your people shall be my people, your God will be my God, you say, ah, I like that, isn't it? When you hear the Lord telling, telling us the book of Genesis, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and become one, we say, ah, that sounds very good, but does not speak to you. That is why we have a problem, even in our society, that when we are struggling with the LGBTQI, some people have read the scriptures and they have heard what the Lord is saying, that a man will be joined to his become one. They have heard that, they have read that, but it has not touched their lives, and therefore for them it is like a man shall be joined to another man, a woman shall be joined to another woman. Because they are still in the mood of listening, but their hearts are still far. Today, in this mouse experience, we are being taught that it's one thing to listen, it is one thing to have your heart burning with the word of God, and another thing to read. Jesus. And therefore they walk with Jesus. They walk with him. And he continues. And they are happy. They have now even become friends. When he wants to pass on and to go, what does he, what do they tell him? Hey, friend, don't go further. Come and stay with us. Come and have a meal with us. Come, we shall give you a place to, to stay. And he obliged. Many times we get people who walk with us, but even after being friends with them, we don't sometimes worry that they are not, they, they have nothing to eat, they have nothing to clothe themselves, they are sick, we don't go to visit them, but we are happy when we meet them. Hey, hi guys, hi guys, go into welcoming them into our space. Our space is very private. Our space is only for me, for us, but not for others. Look at how these two are teaching us that although this guy was a stranger, they welcome him to their space. They welcome him to their house. And this is the moment that was going to be a turning point in their lives. That invitation that letting this stranger come into their house was going to be a moment, was going to be a defining moment in their lives, which they did not know. If they will calm him, they must have gone and sat down with the members of the family, prepared some water for him to bathe, they prepared the food, they must have even shown him, when we have finished everything, this is where you're going to to sleep and now they are at table. So when we welcome others into our space, we should also welcome them to share with us the little we have. It is when they sit down and because he was the Lord, he was Jesus, and that the young people say when he sat down, he could not just be like anybody else. Alicheza Kamaye, Kamaye. He took his role. And what was his role? Just like he had done on Holy Thursday, he took bread, said a blessing, 
broke it. And what did he do? He gave them to eat. And at that moment, what happened? Their eyes were open. Dear brothers and sisters, when we read the word of God from the ambo, when we share from the table of the word, and then we cross over to share from the table of the Eucharist, when the priest standing in the person of Christ and breaks the bread and says the prayers of consecration, and then that communion tells us, take and eat. Our eyes should be open. Our eyes must be open. But many times our eyes remain closed. And we do not receive Jesus. Even when we receive, we receive and we are not transformed. Yet we go home saying our hearts were burning when we heard the word of God. May this Emmaus experience help us not only to have our hearts burning, but also to have our eyes opened so that we can recognize Jesus at the table of the Word and at the table of the Eucharist and receive him in our lives in the sacrament of the Eucharist so that we can be people of the new way. When we recognize Jesus and we have received him, just like Cleopas and his friends, there is no longer any darkness. They were walking slowly, those seven miles to a mouse. It was going to be dark, but now the seven miles don't matter. What happens? Jesus vanishes. They don't spend any more time in their house. Remember it was in the, in the evening. It was late. But they don't consider darkness to be anything that will hold them back. They leave that very moment and go back to Jerusalem. When I recognize Jesus, when he recognize Jesus, when your eyes are opened and you have received Jesus in your heart, then the message of the resurrection, the message of... Blessing Jesus in our lives to the people who need it, the people who are poor, hungry, the people who are sick, it is an urgent message. And it has got to be proclaimed this very moment. That is why they leave and go back to Jerusalem and they meet the other disciples who are still locked up in their room. And when they arrive, it is like somebody who has left a group and is trying to tell the admin to admit them again. The admin is taking too long. It's like they want to admit themselves back to the group. They go back to the group that they were in, the group of the 11, and they stay there. And as they arrive, they must have been tired and panting to tell their story. But when they arrive, they tell, hey, guys, hey, Cleopas, while you are away, something happened. The Lord came. The Lord appeared to us. Yes, and we saw him. They think, La, what's happening? We missed something? As they, they listen to the experience of the eleven, they now join the dots. They now join the dots. And while these have finished telling their story, they also have a story to tell. And they tell of the story of their journey from Jerusalem, walking to a mouse, and how Jesus opened to them the, the scriptures up to the, up to the breaking of the bread, and they recognize him, but he disappeared. Brothers and sisters, the mouse experience is an experience for all of us is an experience so that we can narrate our own experience we can tell others what the Lord has done to us not only with our words but even with our actions when we thank the Lord for having brought us out of darkness maybe we were in a situation maybe economic situation we were sick maybe it's about our job maybe it's about our studies maybe it's about our children and the Lord has brought us to life 
We have a story to tell. We have an experience to share with others. And that is what we come to do in church. Even if it is silently, you are praying your prayer there because you're thanking God. You are praying your prayer there because you're sick, you want God to heal you. You are praying your, your, your prayer there because you're thanking the Lord for a breakthrough. You are praying because you're still in some kind of darkness in your life. Yes, all of us are giving an experience. And when we are going to offer the bread and wine, every one of us is going to offer what they have brought to the church. Not the material offerings that we are going to bring as part of the liturgy, but when the priest will tell us, pray brethren, that my, my as the, as the one offering, leading the offering, my sacrifice and your may be accepted. May the Lord today accept what we are offering, our fears, our joys, our children, as they are going to be at home for a few days. May we offer all this to the Lord. May we offer our country to have peace. May we offer the country of Sudan that may have peace. May we offer our young people that they are not going to be confused with this darkness of the LGBTI, LGBTQI. May we offer the families that are mourning. We offer the families that have secrets in their, in their, in their families. May we offer ourselves even when we seem to be walking hopelessly. May the Lord open our eyes and our hearts so that the mouse experience cannot just be put for ourselves. Let us go out and spread the mouse experience. So that like the psalm that we have listened, chanted very well by Daniel in that Gregorian chant. Thank you very much, Daniel. Today you have really chanted in a very Gregorian way. We are all going to tell the Lord, Lord, you will show me the path of life. May the Lord show us the path of life. May the Lord continue uplifting us. May the Lord continue bringing us together so that we do not fear, that we do not stay away from the Lord because we have been ransomed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is risen, and that is why we are saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. May the Lord help us be close to him. May I be close to Jesus. May the mouse experience be mine. May the mouse experience be yours. May you bring this urgent message to other people. May your heart burn with expectation of receiving the word of God. And may your eyes and my eyes be opened so that we can receive the Eucharist in holiness and in gratitude. Tumsifu Yesu Christ. Tumsifu Yesu Christ.